Force of Execution is the Steven Seagal mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world the feeling of holy shit, how many of these things are there? I don't blame you, and I like your style. F you. It starts off with a close-up of his not at all patchy goatee that he can definitely grow almost like a real person. Then he waddles inside. Let me tell you a little bit about before your time. While explaining how much of an everyman he is. But my boy and I would sent them all back dead in a box. Some of them we cut their heads off and gift wrapped them, we got creative and stuff. And isn't that something we can all relate to? Now, it's time for one of his hedonistic torture kills. But man, that was a long hallway, and he needs a breather. So if you could start it yourself, that would be great. So why don't you cut your motherfucking throat? Just kidding. That thrill is what he lives for. And nobody will take that from him. And thank God that none of this is ever mentioned again. Now, Seagal has a big problem and needs to kill a prisoner for some reason. All right. He do it himself, but he's far too pretty. The target's not innocent, and it's not going to be easy, so he also doesn't want to. And it's going to be a long road. But he knows if this guy agreed to be in a Seagal movie, he's not going to say no to anything. Not a problem. The smart play is paying off an inmate to shank their target. But smart has no place in a Seagal movie. You know the drill. So instead, he gets a job with the corrections department, then attacks all the guards <laughs> and all the prisoners <laughs> to take out Urkel. Need a mustache! But Urkel's career is way too hot right now to even consider being in a Seagal movie. They're right. So they have Marcellus Wallace point out whatever guy responded on Fiverr that day. The one is behind you. And they go with him. Then, after killing everyone else in the jail, he does some Mission Impossible disguise shit. And now they'll never catch him. When he gets back, Seagal's pissed. I can't be embarrassed by my business associates. Because he did exactly what he was supposed to. We have rules. And that's total bullshit. So there's gonna have to be some kind of consequence. So for having the gall to make part of a Seagal movie slightly watchable, and because it's how he gets his jollies, they torture the f out of him. <laughs> Now it's six months later, and word got out he was in a Seagal movie, so now he's unhirable. Now that he's broken him physically, he took my hands. He goes after him mentally. Every time we went to war, we always fought side by side. And he's pretty fucking sure that's not his voice. Get out of here, go as far as you can go, start a new life. You know what? That actually sounds really. We'll hook up again. Your family. Oh, son of a bitch. It turns out Marcellus Wallace and Seagal go way back to Seagal's gip days, and he still can't get over that guy's mission going so well. Curious to know why your boy wasted Drake. Seagal tells him it's like his career. That's a distant pass. And to just drop it. Besides, he's got an offer for him. You might could have a job. He doesn't know if he heard that right, or if this is laced with something, but it's too late now, so he just goes with it. All day, every day. He needs a new body double, and he looks a lot closer to Seagal than they usually do, so as long as he can handle all that bullshit standing and having embarrassing fight scenes, it shouldn't be a problem. I ain't doing shit. Okay, that's two, Seagal. You need to tone it down a notch. But he doesn't. He doubles down by heading to a strip club. And at this point, we have a full coup on our hands. Adios, motherfucker. While he's taking over, Seagal's showing off his gun collection. Here's that infinity I was telling you about. Two confused extras and washed up UFC fighters who couldn't give less of a shit. This is that 50 I was telling you about. Guncraft. This has nothing to do with anything. One of the smallest uh, 
that 45's ever made. But then neither does anything else. Series 70 Colt. Because people who are paid to stand there is the closest thing to friends he'll ever have. Beautiful gun. This goes on for a while. Isn't that amazing? Meanwhile, after taking over the strip club with a Dia de Muertos squeaky toy, Marcellus Agalis goes after the chop shop we didn't know existed until right now. <laughs> While casually walking through a mass murder crime scene and realizing they just threw the bodies over the fence, he calls Seagal. Look, I just want to warn you. To let him know he's got some strong competition in the really stupid shit department. You had to warn me about nothing, man. I got a little surprise coming. But while he's got you on speakerphone. Amazing gun, long slide wide, buddy. Got almost 15 rounds in a 45. Anyways, he decides to spy on them, but realizes this isn't stupid enough, and this is a much better place to stand. Who's that dude? Oh shit, his cover's blown. I'm sure he'll be safe in here. Damn, these guys are good, so now he'll have to talk his way out of it, but words are hard. So that fails too. Talking to Asking the silent guy who he's talking to is a master class in stupid. That's enough. These guys are no fucking joke. Then the movie cranks it up a notch when it reveals Seagal had him tortured and permanently disfigured to keep him safe. Protected his favorite son by keeping him out of sight. Before you can process even a fraction of how fucking stupid that is, he follows it up with this. Now you're lucky I promised my mom I wouldn't shoot anybody today or your ass would be dead. We have an arms race of stupidity on our hands and it's escalating fast. But then they go too far. <laughs> this place serves breakfast 24 hours a day, motherfucker. So he goes full three stooges on them with an assist from a random passerby. <laughs> Desperate to end this travesty of a fight scene, Machete shows up and starts blasting. Seagal, make sure she's okay. You all right? Yeah. Okay, great, because you're taking the fall for this. This is the best way. Luckily, they come up with the perfect story. They attacked me, and I used the gun that my daddy gave me. Well, that doesn't explain why there's only one bullet wound, but three bodies, ten broken bones, and like four broken tables. They remember Seagal's motto. It's gonna get stupid around here. And say, f*** it. The next day, Hector, Hector, and Hector come across one of Seagal's old standing doubles who must have been caught sitting. But nobody cares about that. The important thing is he spent his dying moments giving me a shout out. Thanks, bro, but you're in a Seagal movie, so f*** you. Seagal's so pissed about all of this that he can't even finish his lemon plate, so he penguins his way down to the strip club. Then the two Seagals sit down like grown men and negotiate. But this could do two ways. One way it could go is like, stupid. He forgets the other way, so they just go with stupid. Chitty chitty bang bang. I'm talking about. Speaking of stupid, he calls up that one guy and tells him the plan where they keep him safe by destroying his hands has changed. I need to bring you back. And they need him to fight the guy they were keeping him safe from in the first place. Only now he can't use his fucking hands. I can do that. Normally, that would be the dumbest shit ever, but it's a Seagal movie, so it doesn't even crack the top 10. Sorry, bro. But this does. What the f are you doing? Just fixing your hands with scorpions, bro. Yo. You know, normal shit. Goes way back. Mayans or Incas or some shit. I don't know, older. While whatever the fuck that is is happening, this guy, along with Dollar General Terry Crews, confront one of the Seagals. His message is one of diplomacy. You can go f your mother. Then we get the shocking twist that Cruz is working for Seagalis. 6 0. 
which might matter if we gave a sh about any of these people, but we don't. Now this guy, who I'm starting to realize is a metaphor for a Seagal fan, whose existence is purely theoretical, gets rewarded for his loyalty by having his hands broken again. Oh, wait, no, no, wait, 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 wait a minute. Until he passes out. <laughs> So it's not quite as bad as being a Seagal fan. All right. Then the Hectors show up, so they have to think quick. Close the door, close the door. Make sure it's locked. But she misunderstands and thought he said to remove the knob and the lock. So they're abducted, but they bravely sacrifice themselves to save the super fan. <laughs> Just kidding. He's got some kind of disease. It's all full of pus. They tell them if they don't dispose of his body right now, they'll all get infected and die. What? What are you staying around for? Get rid of him. So they call up their specialist Hector to take care of it. But it's a two-man job, so he calls his buddy Hector to help him out. They're professionals and know the most discreet way to do this is with a fucking chainsaw. <laughs> But they're foiled because nobody ever checked to see if he was even dead. After taking out Hector, Hector tries to flee when we get the special effects extravaganza that ate up most of the movie's budget. Then he hops on this sweet dirt bike and hauls ass back to Machete. Don't end up like me, is it? Yeah, no shit. After that useless advice, he kicks in a door that's not even closed. And Seagal shoots two Hectors. Before crippling Hector. Back at Seagal's compound, Marcellus pulls up to claim his place as the new Seagal. And he's making a hell of a case with his no-look double pistol sniping. But you have to wake up real early in the afternoon to pull a slow one on Seagal, and he counters with some stupid shooting of his own. After way too much nonsensical shooting, it's down to just the Seagals, the superfan, and the token woman half Seagal's age. Don't even think about it, son. They're finally gonna settle who's the stupidest, and holy shit. Sigalis is throwing fucking haymakers. How the hell do I get out of here? How do I get out of here? Holy shit. For the first time ever, someone actually has Sigal's respect. I said, how the hell do I get out of here? Sigal's still gonna kill him, of course, because that's all he knows, but he'll do it as stupidly as possible. It's gonna get stupid around here. By throwing a light like Sigalis is a fucking cat which somehow works. Ah! Then his fan tries to ask him something. Alexander. But we just passed 90 minutes. You really retiring? So he tells him to eat shit. And he got up and walked away, I guess. Nobody knows and nobody cares. 